Hello, everyone. Well, thank you for the introduction. So as, uh, as you have heard, my name is Pragalb. I'm a senior manager at Wayfair. So I lead a team of uh, software and data engineers. And um, uh, we, we are responsible for creating your data pipelines and uh, backend services. So in today's talk, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, creating uh, uh, data pipelines uh, from uh, uh, the application which utilize the, the domain-driven design uh, framework. And uh, I'll talk about like how we created a data pipeline to solve some business matrix in a real time in a more decoupled way. So you might have heard about uh, Wayfair, if not, Wayfair is the world's largest uh, online destination for uh, for all things homes, including uh, furniture, household items, and appliances. It is an e-commerce platform focused on, uh, on, on home category. Uh, with any e-commerce platform, two things are very important. One is the choices. You give customers the choices of products and provide them with the high-class imagery. Photo, uh, photo studios are very expensive uh, to operate, and also they don't scale. Like you don't, you have to take the furniture to a studio, collect images, and it doesn't scale when you're selling millions of products. So what we do is that we use uh, 3D models and custom imagery. So as you see in these images here, in this diagram, so the first one utilize uh, 3D models to create a image uh, of your accent chair. And the next one talks about the model swap pipeline where we use the imagery template uh, to create an image of a of a bed on your screen. It is also said that at Wayfair, we don't sell furniture, we sell images, because images is the one what you see to make a purchase decision. Okay, Let's talk about some of the common uh, stream publication pattern. So there are three main patterns, the database authoritative, the Kafka authoritative, and the dual write. Each of them has their own pros and cons, but they're centered around the database. It is a database that provides the consistency, the durability. The database supports transactions, and they are well tested. They are well battle tested. But the areas where the databases lacks are the scalability. And the databases that scale doesn't provide you all these guarantee. So what if, if you have to create a data pipeline uh, where you have where you don't have the guarantees of a database? But the system provides all the elasticity in the most decoupled way. Let's talk about the microservices. Okay, this slide is very text heavy. I'm not going to read the entirety of it, but I'll just cover some of the very essentials of microservices here. So we all know, we all are familiar of, uh, with object-oriented principles. This has dominated the world for, for multiple decades, and it will continue to be relevant. It's not getting, it's not going to be replaced with any domain driven or any other pattern. The core essentials of, uh, of uh, object, -oriented, object oriented programming so include the flexibility, the reusability aspect of it. Whereas what microservices uh, are basically the independently deployable service uh, that work together and model across the domain. So when we talk about uh, the microservices, the terms that uh, comes across a lot are CQRS, the command query responsibility segregation, the domain-driven design, the DDD, and the event sourcing. So it has a text which talks about these three patterns. Let me read a code which I found very interesting. It says that any fool can write a code that computer can understand. Good programmer write code that human understands. So this is uh, from one of the a document that I came across refactoring of uh, improving the design of existing code. It was published back in 1999. Okay, so let's talk about what we did here. So at Wayfair, we have a Wayfair Digital Studio. It is a it is a applications uh, that are used to create the 3D asset at Wayfair. So a few years ago, it has been rewritten using the domain-driven design architecture pattern. And as you see in the screen, the user interact with the UI. The UI make a microservice call across multiple domains. Within the domains, you have uh, events that are triggered as a completion of a workflow step. 
again apology for this uh, this image this has lots of information and very small font i'll share the link of my slide uh, for you, you can take a look at it for more information so as you see here this diagram talks about five different domains here the request job task 3d and render one thing to note here is that this domain is not or this domain model is not created for a application for an application this is a generic model which supports various workflows so workflows includes creation of a 3d model or image rendering pipeline or a image modification pipeline the small boxes that you see here in these domains are basically your domain events and they are triggered during a state change or a completion of a step in the workflow let's zoom into the two domains that uh, we talk here one is request the other one is job so think of this as a as a user wants to render an image so what will the user do user will submit a request here once the user user submit a request it will trigger a request submitted event which then goes through a verification process it will check whether a 3d model already exists can that model be reused or if not it has to create a model based upon that it is going to dispatch the request once the request is dispatched that is another event here it creates a job then job goes through its own pipeline of job being assigned job being submitted job being assigned to a modeler reviewer etc all these tiny blocks are respective events that is produced so when we create a data pipeline when we want to answer certain business questions like what is the turnaround time of my uh, of my model creation what is the turnaround time of my image rendering we need to take all the way from the request that was submitted till the very end when the task got completed in between then between the start and the end there are lots of events which are getting triggered there are lots of business logic that is happening and if you were to create a pipeline using these domain events you will be writing a very very messy code and you will be re recreating those business logic in your data pipeline which again is not a very efficient approach here and fundamentally these domain events are also not uh, suitable for uh, for uh, for usage outside the domain boundary the other options are here is that you can create a data pipeline using microservices but uh, a company of a decent scale you are talking about large volume of uh, data the services that are created are or primarily used for application integration where the typical uh, pattern is like high frequency request which returns a low volume of data at a lower latency when you are making a data pipeline call you might be bombarding your systems you might be bombarding your infrastructure which again is not a good pattern here so these are some of the challenges if you want to create a data pipeline out of domain events let's see what are the potential options do we have here so the two recommended uh, theoretical options that you see uh, talks about the event sourcing and event aggregate there are lots of literature which talks about that event sourcing should not be used in conjunction with domain driven design and there there are like a strong reason why it should not use but then there are some arguments where it makes sense those arguments are like a reality in practical it may make sense let's let's take an example of uh, what i'm talking what i mean by event sourcing here so event sourcing talks about persisting changes as they are happening in an application as a sequence of those events so think of a banking transactions where credit and debits are occurring as a part of a event these events can be queried to determine to determine the uh, current balance or alternately you can store this uh, uh, this uh, uh, you, you can uh, store these events and pre calculate the current balance in advance which will simplify your process another approach here is the event aggregation event aggregation talks about implementing an observer pattern where you have a listener listening to these domain events and take a action when a particular milestone has reached and i'm going to talk about the event aggregation in our solution here 
So let's quickly take a look at, at a very, very high level, 20,000 feet overview of the data pipeline here. On the left hand side, you see the data generation. Uh, data is generated in the form of a Kafka topics, which is pushed to PubSub in uh, Google Cloud. Then something happens in our real time side. And finally, the data is written out to BigQuery, where ETL pipelines create a pre aggregated matrix, which is then used for reporting and dashboards. So now let's say if we don't do anything, if we create a one big table for each for each event, then what is going to happen? We'll end up having hundreds of tables. When we want to answer a KPI, we are joining all these all these tables, uh, which means we are again recreating that business logic here. And for another data pipeline, we'll have to do do it again. So instead of that, how about we implement a observer pattern here? Utilizing data flow, we can listen to these events in PubSub. And, uh, and here we are using uh, NoSQL storage as a short-term cache. And once a particular milestone is achieved, it triggers the outbound event, which is then used for a data pipeline. You can think of a, uh, of a event like that is triggered when a job is assigned to a modeler after the request is submitted. So that event will contain information all the way from request submitted till the job is assigned to a modeler. And using those events, you can simplify your downstream pipelines. Okay, so why why Apache Beam? Why Cloud Data Flow? So at Wayfair, we migrated to we start migration to cloud, and Google Cloud is our preferred uh, vendor here, uh, which makes the choice easier. The reason why we went with uh, data flow is uh, the main reason is the serverless. It doesn't have the infrastructure hassle as compared to the data proc. And especially for uh, for streaming pipelines, for unbounded uh, source, it provides a very good scaling. So that was one of the reason why we went with data flow. And this slide talks about the usage of uh, data flow at Wayfair. So in 2020, we started the migration. In the past two years, there has been tremendous growth of uh, data flow usage at Wayfair. By the way, this chart talks about the cost. And obviously, we, this cannot be shared in the public domain. But as you can see in the trend, we are paying a lot to Google for our data flow usage. All right. So this is the end result of uh, this data pipeline. It contains various charts, various metrics. What does it provide? So image creation pipeline is a complex step. It requires human. It requires creative artists. It also requires automation. To identify what are the bottlenecks, these are very key to the business to make sure that we are creating uh, images more efficiently. We are creating a better quality images. We are identifying the bottlenecks. We are identifying the reason where things are getting blocked. So these data, uh, these dashboards provide the insight. Uh, so at last, uh, what are our learning and what will be the recommendations here? So when we started, uh, we focused more on the more on the technical solution, like how to ingest the stream and and those stuff. We had a very limited knowledge about uh, the microservice architecture. We had known very less about what is domain driven, what is CQRS, etc. And we treated uh, domain event as just like any other any other Kafka events here. But uh, uh, when uh, things started to fail, when uh, it was not making any sense because of uh, uh, the one-to-many relationship, because of the complexity, because of so many events that are uh, that needs to be stretched together, then we looked into, then we had a more deep dive into okay, what is the recommendation here. Unfortunately, if we search around uh, what is the pattern to create a data pipelines on microservices uh, uh, events, there are not enough literature. And both are very antithesis. Like domain driven talks about decoupling the domain, whereas the data integration is about all about collecting data, unifying them to solve a, a business problem. So they are both very contradictory to begin with. What we found was that observer pattern, it really reduced lots of noise. You still have to apply that logic, but you are applying that logic at one place, which means that whoever is consuming that 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 event 
is getting the well-crafted event versus everyone trying to solve it in their own ways. Apache Beam was very helpful here. Uh, we we ended up uh, using a NoSQL uh, as a as a temp uh, as a temp store. The reason being is that because some of these workflows take really long time. Some of the workflows involved offshore artists who are sitting in a different geography, different time zone. So these steps takes time. So we cannot use something like a event boundaries uh, that comes with the framework here. We need some sort of a cache. And BigQuery has, oh, sorry, BigTable has a time to live property. So that way we can easily free up the space uh, at a defined interval. So our conclusion is that don't jump into a technical solution with just business knowledge. Just try to understand the underlying design construct. So here are some helpful resources uh, that uh, we referred as we start the journey of understanding some of these uh, uh, microservices framework. And yeah, that's all.